In this video, I'm going to talk about the diagnostic process for gluteal tendinopathy. Get our very own assessment ebook and mobile app. Links are in the video description. Hi and welcome back to PhysioTutors. Gluteal tendinopathy, which falls under the nowadays used umbrella term greater trochanteric pain syndrome or GTPS, is part of the differential diagnosis in patients with lateral hip pain. Pain and tenderness over the greater trochanter is the hallmark symptom in GTPS. Women over the age of 40, generally overweight and living a sedentary lifestyle, are mostly affected, but the condition is also seen in athletes, particularly runners. The symptoms have an insidious onset and worsen over time. They may be aggravated by lying on the affected site at night and with prolonged sitting and subsequent rising up from the seated position, especially if the patient had been sitting in low sitting positions where the hip is flexed beyond 90 degrees as the tensile and compressive forces of the tendons around the greater trochanter are higher. Generally speaking, tendons who experience normal and regular load are in a state of homeostasis. Slightly greater than normal load will lead to a net anabolic biological response, which results in increased tensile strength. Conditions such as being overweight requires more load-bearing capacity and a sedentary lifestyle may induce catabolic biological responses and thus reduce the tensile strength of the tendons. On the other hand, Loads that are much greater than normal hinders the tendon to adapt appropriately and can lead to the development of tendinopathy. Lateral hip pain requires ruling out of referral from the lumbar spine or hip joint. A quick method is the three phases test of Manel that we covered in another video which aims to identify either the hip, the SI joint or the lumbar spine as the source of nociception, which then requires differential diagnosis of these joints. Another key differentiation should be made between GTPS and hip osteoarthritis. While similarities are present, such as stiffness on extending the hip during sit to stand or walking after sitting, patients with hip OA have difficulties with things like putting on shoes, which patients with GTPS have no trouble doing. We have recently covered different diagnostic tests for the condition. It has to be said that as standalone tests, they only have at most a moderate clinical utility. One may form the clinical diagnosis GTPS in the event that the patient is positive on palpation of the greater trochanter plus at least one of the active provocative tests such as the FADA-R or adduction-R test. Ultimately, the clinical diagnosis can be confirmed by positive imaging findings. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this video discussing the diagnostic process of gluteal tendinopathy and of course if you did, hit the like button and share it with a colleague or friend. If you are new here or haven't subscribed yet, please do so. It's free and it helps us out a ton. Make sure to check the links in the video description to our assessment ebook and mobile app and other ways to support this channel. As always, this was Andreas for PhysioTutors. I'll see you in another video. Bye.